We know that the e-commerce world is filled with millions of stores, a vast array of niches, products, and business models. But how big do these online stores get, specifically stores utilizing print on demand via a platform like Shopify? This is a topic I have long been interested in for literally years now and have just been researching it on and off and trying to stay updated. Um, you know, the beauty with print on demand is that you can go out there and sell a high quality canvas like this one right here, no inventory on hand, or even this poster right here from the night sky. And it's only printed when the customer pays you, when you get an order. It's high quality, it's fast shipping. And in a day and age where customer expectations are so high, who would not want to use this business model? So throughout this video, we're gonna analyze four stores and you're gonna get a sense of where they are all at in terms of estimated revenue. And it's gonna help us answer our larger question here, which is how big can print on demand get? I think there's two sides to this question. Side number one is the broad overview, which means you look at the business revenue as a whole, regardless of you know, if they did print on demand at one time and progress to in-house fulfillment, doesn't matter. You look at the revenue as a whole, all that matters is they started with print on demand. Side number two to the question is just looking at the print on demand aspect. And if I build a store and it's successful, how long can I uh, use POD, rely pretty much at their mercy, how long can I do that before my life cycle ends, before I have to pivot? That question we're gonna answer at the end of this video. The stores that we're gonna be looking at they might not be doing print on demand at this point in time. However, it's very likely um, that they started with it if they progressed to something different. One more thing, the, the revenue amounts that are mentioned, these are estimations. I have always been fascinated by numbers, even if it's just an estimation of revenue. It's what motivates me. It's what mo motivated me when I started with e-commerce until this very day right now. I'm really excited about this video. Let's get into it right now. Let's start with my own print on demand brand, 100% POD. We've been in business for almost two years now and have done about five and a half million in sales. Probably will hit about 10 million in the next six to eight months. We've hovered around that $350,000, $400,000 a month mark for most of this year, the highest month being over a million last November. If we use a rank meter on a scale of one to 10 in relation to all the print on demand stores out there in relation to lifetime revenue, I'd say we're at about a three. $2.3 million last year. I got on this weird tangent searching for sweatshirts and I realized, you know, nobody's doing this type of print on like actual fashion. First up on the list, Beloved Shirts. I saw these guys on Shark Tank back in 2017 and was fascinated. This was back when I was really learning the ropes of print on demand and trying to just learn everything I could. I saw these guys on TV. I'd estimate their lifetime revenue to be 7.7 .7 million. I'll rate them a five. One thing I have to mention, because as you guys know, I'm a huge advocate of this, they're offering personalized products. This is amazing. This is a new feature that they've implemented compared to uh, when I ordered from them a while back, they did not have this. So I wanna break down the $7 million in revenue and I actually just made an order with them and it looks like they're using Shopify. So I'm relying on the accuracy of the order number, the order confirmation number to point to the revenue. So uh, right here, I'm order number 221,000. So knowing that Shopify counts up from 1,000, I'll take 220,000 and times that by an estimated AOV, average order value of about $35 is, is what I think it is. Everyone through all the, the products in their store. And that leads us to um, that leads us to $7.7 .7 million. Now, if we wanna go even deeper into this, I made an order with them about a year ago, January of 2018, and actually over a year ago, and I was order number 98,000. And what this means is, so what I'll do is I'm gonna sub subtract 221,000 from 98,000, which leaves me how many orders they had during that year and a half time span and, and times that by the average order value, the estimated average order value, which takes us to $4.2 million. So since January of 2018, they've done an estimated 4.2 million. 
or about $355,000 a month. And to top this all off, I'm almost 100% certain that they are utilizing print on demand. I just wanna jump in here really quick and say that after a little bit more research, it does look like they print and ship in-house, which does make sense for more of their complex products and fast movers, the things they specialize in. However, I'm led to believe that for products like the blankets and the mugs, they might be using print-on-demand fulfillment. I could be wrong, it's just an assumption, but um, that is what I'm thinking, and I'll find out when I get my order in the mail. Given the shipping times and given the, uh, and, uh, given the, the packaging. If Beloved Shirts continues at this pace and our estimated revenue is close to the real figure, I'd estimate close to 15 million in sales by 2021. Secondly is Piper Lou Collection. Now, you guys have heard me talk about them numerous times and I just could not leave them out of this video. I couldn't do that. They were listed for sale in Flippa for $5 million. So I got to see all their data um, from the listings. They've done over 30 million in lifetime sales since 2016, 15 million of which was in 2018, all print on demand. It's amazing. Piper Lou has set the tone for the rank meter that we're using. I'll put them up at a nine. I can't think of many others competing at this scale. It's one thing to have a business doing a million dollars a month, but being able to do it profitably and very profitably actually, six figures a month at a scale like this, that is a major accomplishment. It just goes to show you what is possible when you focus on refining what you see work and just being a good business owner. If Piper Lou continues at the growth rate they're at, I see them hitting that $50 million plus mark by 2020. Most businesses that size are losing money or, or not making a lot of profit or, or doing something really extravagant like skin or beauty care. I'd say they're not doing too bad considering their best sellers are just simple customizable tumblers. I think a lot of their growth comes from their email marketing. In fact, I have it pulled up right now. What they're doing is they're selling to their current customers again and again and again. Um, ideally, you know, good email marketing numbers, a good store will be at, um, their, their emails will, will be at about 30% of their overall revenue. And I made this purchase with Piper and Lou a few weeks ago and they still continue to follow up with me, whether it's about a review that I need to leave or um, a, a product that they're trying to cross sell me. And they even sent me this really clever email right here with the store credit. It's so personalized down to the cent amount. I thought it was so clever. Uh, I sent it to our brand manager to kind of archive it and take note of it. Take note of this right here. Take note of what they're doing, especially with the email marketing, because we're seeing what's working from an eight-figure print-on-demand store. How big this brand can get and where the ceiling is at is really up to them. They've dialed in on a strategy that works, and now it really just comes, comes down to continually refining it, making it better, listening to customer uh, feedback, expanding it, maybe adding in a subscription box. This is something that they mentioned doing on Flippa, um, and I think it's a brilliant idea considering that they have 400 and 50,000 customers available to them at any given time, that's massive leverage. Third up on the list, Iconic, the leader in canvas art that's been in business since 2016. Me, Jeff, and his 16-year-old brother actually did a couple million dollars, just us three together. Then, you know, we made that decision to go full-time, and you fast forward to now, and it's, you know, a full-fledged company. I just want to say, I love this brand. I've probably made over five orders with them. I'd estimate their lifetime revenue to be close to $15 million. We'll rank them at a number six. The thing about Iconic I love the most is they're clearly not just in the business of selling canvases. That's not their business. They're selling motivation and inspiration, mostly through all the content that they put out on their YouTube channel, Instagram. If people get on board with that and they resonate with that, they'll eventually buy. Last up on the list, let's look at AAF Nation. Hopefully, hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, it looks like they've customized the Shopify order numbers. They have the AAF in front of it. But let's say that this number after that is actually factual. I am actually um, order number 707,000. They didn't change that part. If we times that by an AOV of what I'd estimate to be $27, 
That would equate to a lifetime revenue of $19 million. And even before calculating that dollar amount, I figured it would be somewhere up in the eight figure amount like that. If we look at the massive social following, the stats on similar web, and the vast press coverage that they have noted on their website, that number does start to make sense and we'll rank them at a number seven. AAF Nation sells everything from shirts to mugs and even leggings. Instead of being well known for one specific winner, they have multiple products and multiple winners driving traffic to the website. And as they expand their product line and find new winners, they get bigger. There are so many other stores out there that would fit in this study, but I do wanna keep it kind of brief. We have the Home Tea that did a million dollars their first year in business, according to Shark Tank. The Night Sky, a brand I'd estimate that's done 10 million in revenue with multi six figures monthly. Arm the Animals, a large social following, revenue in the millions. And Gear Bunch, ran by a really cool guy. His name is Dan Nikas. He teaches print on demand. Go check him out. If I remember correctly, he was saying their sales are close to 10 million. They just closed a deal with Marvel. Absolutely killing it with these leggings. All right, guys, let's look at our meter. Out of the four brands that we analyzed, Piper Lou was the largest at $30 million in lifetime sales. AAF Nation was not that far behind. And for the other two, the average that we seen was between seven to $12 million um, that it took a few years to get to. So how big can you get with print on demand? My honest answer is in the ballpark of 10 to $20 million before you progress away from it. You go to in-house fulfillment. You find a private manufacturer to have more control over your products. And I'm not saying that uh, thou shall not pass that number. I mean, look at Piper Lou. They've done $30 million plus in revenue. However, I think 10 to 20 is an average glass ceiling. At least from our perspective, we haven't even hit $10 million yet. And we're always asking, why are we still doing print on demand? Why have we not gone to something different? And I think that once you really get to that $10 million mark and you have so many customers and you're so well known, the question is, why have we not done this yet? We have all this cash flow now to be able to invest. You just have so much more money at that point, so much um, more to put into your brand. I'm curious to hear from you. What print on demand brands and stores are you familiar with that was not featured in this video, I would love to know in the comments down below. I'd love to order from them and just kind of funnel hack them and bring that value into a, a future video here. If you got value out of this, go ahead, smash that like button. It really just helps with the YouTube algorithm. Just don't break your phone. Just kind of tap it. Thanks so much, guys. With that, I will see you in next week's video.